Today on Zoom Daily Don, I'm going to be talking about the vacuum fluorescent display. Now, I've had these things around ever since I was a little kid, but I've kind of always liked LEDs more. So, I've never really bothered with trying to figure out how these things work. But, in recent days, I pulled a couple out and I decided to look on the interwebs to see exactly if I could find some information. Now, I did. And, they're actually pretty cool displays once you get to understand them. I also found out that you can use these things kind of like vacuum tubes to control power and signals as well. So I want to kind of go over how these vacuum displays work and hopefully help out a couple of other people that might be trying to figure out how these things work in principle as well. Hopefully you'll learn a lot. About the only thing I can't do is show you how to program these things because I'm a hardware person. Wait, did you say that... You don't know how to program these things? No, 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 I really don't. Uh, well then, uh, how are you making it talk like that? Hard work and determination. That's not a real answer. Uh, hmm, fair enough. Uh, I'm using three switches. You know, I would be mad if I wasn't so impressed. Thank you. This is a vacuum fluorescent display, and there are three major components to a vacuum fluorescent display to understand before you can properly utilize them. The first are these tungsten filament wires right here. They run the entire length of the vacuum fluorescent display and produce heat along with free electrons. The second part is this metallic grid that lays underneath the filament wires. And lastly, the portion underneath which contains the electroluminescent phosphor layer. Some vacuum fluorescent displays are built in reverse, only showing the electroluminescent phosphorus material on the front of the display. Flipping over the display allows us to see this construction. On the inside of this display, you have the same anchor points for the filaments. And on the other side, you can see the four filament wires. One, two, three, and four. Underneath this piece on the inside of the vacuum fluorescent display, you can see the grids. Some of the grids are visible in this area right here along the bottom. And as I rotate it, you can see along on the inside how they're connected to the front of the panel. So here are your grids right here. There's one grid, there's another grid, there's a bigger grid, but they're all there. So let's start playing around with these and connecting them. Before I show you how to properly drive these things, let me show you the fluke I saw as a kid, which made me think these things were 10 times more complicated than they actually are. Here's a small piezoelectric igniter from a cigarette lighter. I'm gonna turn off the light and show you how, how it works. When the top of these are pressed down, they make a little spark across the two wires. So, when I had these as a kid, what I did is I hooked them up to the fluorescent vacuum displays, and I just shocked them. So I'll show you what happens when I do that. Oops. Well, we're done with that. I'm sick of that thing, so let's go and grab a plasma pen. Here I am using one of my plasma pens that works kind of like a piezoelectric igniter. And I can also do the same thing and light up one of the tubes a little bit in some areas. So for a while I thought that these things operated on high voltage. And I was wrong. I was very wrong. So how do these things actually work? Well, let me show you. Let's talk about the first vital component inside of these vacuum displays, the tungsten filament wires. The tungsten filament wires are a vital part of this display because they create free electrons. Free electrons are generated through a process called thermiotic reactions. What happens is the energy comes into the filament wires. So I've got two filament wires 
I've got two input wires connected. One input wire coming in through here that goes to this part and then it sends current across these wires. Now when electrical current crosses these wires, the atoms in the wires will start to heat up and they'll vibrate. When they do, electrons will fly off of them. A little bit more about that in the later portions of this video. Right now I'm going to put power into these element wires and show you how they look when running. Here I'm going to be putting power into the tungsten filament. You can see the tungsten filaments start to glow as power is put through them. Now these things can actually take a relatively high amount of input power but usually only require about 3 volts. So I bring those uh, back down and I don't want to bring them down too fast otherwise they have a tendency of snapping. So you can see them start to barely glow and you're going to want to find that point where you can see them just about barely glow. That's the first key to getting your fluorescent display to run. Vacuum fluorescent display that you can't see the filament wires in. They are still usually located on one side and the other side of the display. So I'm going to power those up as well and you'll start to see a glow on the inside of the vacuum display. Off lights. So you'll see that there is a glow already in there. I'm going to turn it up. And uh, this is the back of the panel that has that uh, coating on the inside of the glass. And turn it up. And now you can start to see those filament wires on the inside of this display a little bit more and how they go across the entire display on the inside underneath that fluorescent layer. So the first step in running your vacuum fluorescent display is to hook up those filament wires and pass about two and a half to three volts into those wires. Here I have a vacuum fluorescent display running with three volts across the filament wires. If I use one of my modified cameras you can see the IR energy coming off those filament wires. So at this point I thought let's put some electrical energy through these wires on the bottom and see what we get. Hmm, maybe more power. Hmm, maybe more knowledge? Wait, but knowledge is power. Let's talk about the second important part inside of a vacuum fluorescent display, the grids. So why are the grids important? Well, what happens is when the free electrons are created in the thermionic reaction, of the tungsten filament wires, they have no place to go really. That's why they make an electron cloud. And if the grids are positively charged, it will start to attract those free electrons. Electrons have a negative charge, so they want to be drawn towards a positive charge. Grid connections can often be hard to find, so how do you locate them? You'll notice that the most outer connections on some of these platforms correspond to how the grids are laid up on the inside of the screen. So they correspond pretty well. You can notice on this one too where the grids are tabbed. So there's a grid tab and a grid tab and a grid tab and a grid tab. So all these wires connect to those grids as well which leads to this side of the display with the pins. So it can take a little bit of time to determine what wires go to what. So on these displays, the grid covers a section of the panel, usually uh, its own independent section. So there's a grid here, and a grid here, and a grid here, and a grid here, 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 and here. And that's seven grids. So there's seven wires down here in this section of the screen. The setup that I have running right now is a lithium ion cell here in this corner with the positive going through a 15 ohm resistor and this is connected to the tungsten filament on this side of the display. On this section going through the tungsten filaments I have the negative connection which is running to the negative connection of this battery. There's also another wire running up through here and is connected to the negative of this adjustable power supply. 
I, for the time being, have all of the other connections on the vacuum fluorescent display tube connected up to positive, and I have a probe wire connected up to positive. So that way, I can connect up the positive wire to the grid pins and draw the free electrons down. Now that you've seen my setup and understand that the filament is the negative connection for the vacuum display, I will now touch the grids with a positive connection in correspondence to their location on the screen. And if I make them all touch together, I can light them all up at once. Well, more or less. This can be controlled with the voltage. So here I have the voltage only set to 9 volts. And I can control the brightness of the illumination by turning up and turning down the voltage. And that is at about 16 volts right there. So, not high voltage at all. Let's talk about what the other wires do. The last of the three major components on a vacuum fluorescent display to understand is the electroluminescent layer. The electroluminescent layer composes the sections or segments of each individual character. These individual sections are often tied together on a display. So we can see on this lead that it's connected here, it's connected here, and here, and continues to do so along the entire display. These can be traced out to their corresponding pins along the side of the display. In this vacuum fluorescent display, we can also do the same by tracing out where the different fine wires go and finding their corresponding pins. On my setup here, I have done only one thing. I've joined all of the grids together and I have left all of the segment pins open. In this, there is only one negative connection still, and that negative connection is connected to the tungsten filaments on the top. The grids have a positive charge, which are drawing the free electrons down on the grid. And that means that the free electrons currently are going into the positive of the power supply. But if I put a positive reference underneath those grids as well, some of the electrons will go through the pores in the mesh of the grid and they will hit the electroluminescent layer on the bottom. Now I have the two positive connections reversed. All of my grids are now connected here to the positive of the power supply. And I have my test wire ready to touch on the contacts on the other side of the vacuum display. These control each individual portions of segments on the display. So how did I make the conversation in the beginning of the video happen with just three switches? Well, it's actually very simple. I have all of these segments needed for the closed mouth position tied together. So they're continuously getting power. However, nothing lights up because none of the grids are activated with a positive signal. So I have this switch and I have this switch right here. And these two switches control two grids. So one controls the upper grid and one controls the lower grid. Then I have all of the digits or the segments that I need for the open mouth action connected to this switch. So let me show you what happens when I turn off the lights and I hit the switches. So if I hit say one switch you can see that one of them turns on and that's the first switch right here. 
if I hit the other switch, you can see that the other one turns on. So between those two switches, I can control which segment is on. Now I can also turn on the open mouth activation, but if I'm not holding any of the grid switches down, you don't see any activation on the grid. If I hold both grid switches down at the same time, you can see they both do the same thing at once. So that is how I used a switch to control the vacuum fluorescent display in the beginning of this video. Hey, hey, hey Zeno Dilladon, what happens uh, if you turn down that knob? Hey, 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 stop that. Stop that. I'm not, I'm not feeling so good. Now I'm going to show you how to use one of these vacuum fluorescent displays as a triode tube. Okay, so. I want you to kind of ignore this whole section over here because this battery and these resistors are just running the tungsten filament wires inside of the tube. There's a couple of things here to note. I have this blue wire which is connected to the negative of my adjustable power supply. I have this orange wire which is connected to the positive of my power supply currently. And I have the grids connected together, but they're disconnected. They're not connected to anything right now. So in principle, what's going on? We have our heated cathode. In the center, we have the grid, just like it would be in any vacuum tube. And on the bottom, with all those segments joined together, it's kind of like one gigantic anode. So I can use the grid to control whether the anode or the segments are getting power or not. Power or not. Now, how is this important? Well, its operation is just like a vacuum tube. I am going to take the anode or the segment section off and I'm going to put a bunch of LEDs in series. So I would be putting the anode to the cathode of the LEDs. And I'll be putting the anode of the LEDs in the positive of my power supply. So what happens if we send a positive signal to the grid now? The LEDs also come on because they're in series with the vacuum display. Now the other interesting thing to note is that the LEDs and the vacuum tube can be controlled with a lower voltage, which is why they're used for amplifying purposes. I am going to connect another lithium ion cell up and make it a common negative connection, common ground connection. This will give me about 4 volts to the grid. This means that I can turn on and off the grid using a lower voltage than is needed to drive the LEDs. Isn't that cool? Just like a transistor or vacuum tube. Turn up the voltage a little bit. Yeah. Let's turn off the light and see how that works. Yeah, that's cool. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more experiments and stuff, let me know, share your ideas, and as always, stay tuned for more.